he's gone. Would you express your love to him right now? Bibles in St. John chapter 8 as you remain standing in honor to the word of the Lord. I'm going to tell you like I told uh, when we spoke earlier to the Spanish congregation. I'm sure you noticed that God, uh, there's no screens working. And uh, that's because God's wanting you to learn to bring your Bible. <laughs> Amen. Just blow the dust off of it and bring it on. Amen. Uh, so that you can learn what's happening to us because of the screens. The screens are good for our visitors, and we thank God to assist them. But what's happening to the saints, they don't even know where the books of the Bible are. Amen. I'm sitting with saints of God at times and talking at various times, even here in the services and different things, and say, um, you know, go, go to uh, uh, Numbers, and let me just show you the scripture. Uh, where's Numbers? Is that is that in the New Testament? Talk about people been saved for years now. We don't know. And that's why the devil's eating our lunch. He likes the fact that you don't know. <laughs> but somebody lift your hands and say, I'm going to study the word. So I'm going to know the word. Say so to know the word is to know the God of the Word. St. John chapter 8 and starting in verse 37. We're going to be reading down quite a few verses listening to Jesus interact and speak with the Pharisees and the religious rulers of the day and age. Now, I'm going to tell you right now, in all honesty, a lot of you couldn't take Jesus. Because when you, you, you think bishops can talk hard. When Jesus is ready, you, you won't hear some. <laughs> wow. He can say some stuff. You'd sue him for defamation of character. <laughs> Verse 37. I know that you are Abraham's seed, but you seek to kill me because my word hath no place in you. Now listen to this. He's going to just going to get right to it. He's going to speak hard. I speak that which I've seen with my father. You do that which you've seen with. Yeah, he, he's going to tell him. He's looking. He's now. He's talking to the pastors and the elders and the bishops of the day and age. He said, "Here's the problem. We have different fathers." Telling you, Jesus knows it. Mm -hmm. Buckle your seat, though. Yes, they answered and said to him, "Abraham is our father." Jesus said to them, "If he's not convinced, if you were Abraham's children, you would do the works of Abraham." He's giving the definition of how you know who your father is. Amen. Whose works you perform, that's who your father is, regardless of who you, you claim your father to be. 
Verse 40, but now you seek to kill me, a man that has told you the truth, which I've heard of God. This did not Abraham. You do the deeds of your father. Then said they to him, we be not born of fornication. We have one father, even God. They're going to you know, like, look, Jesus, if you want to talk harsh, we can talk harsh back. We're not stupid. We know Joseph ain't your father. That's what they're telling him. We know Joseph's not your father. We're not born of fornication like you. Jesus saith unto them, if God were your father, you would love me. You can't say God's your father and don't love God's kids. Amen. Some of you want to say, I love God, just can't take his children. Sorry, don't worry. <laughs> For I proceed forth and came from God, neither came of myself, but he sent me. Listen to this. Why do you not understand my speech, even because you cannot hear my word? He's going to tell them why they can't hear his word. Verse 44. Ye are of your father the devil. That's, ooh, you'd be like, talk louder to my lawyer right here. <laughs> Ye are of your father the devil, and the lust of your father you will do. He was a murderer from the beginning, abode not in the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh of the lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. And because I tell you the truth, you believe me not. Which of you convinces me of sin? And if I say the truth, why do you not believe me? Read verse 47 out loud with me. He that is of God heareth God's words. You therefore hear them not because you are not of God. Wow. Ouch. This is plain speech. Now listen to them. They're going to talk right back harsh. Verse 48. Then answered the Jews and said unto him, Said we not well without our Samaritan? Now you've got to remember what a Samaritan is. The Assyrians came down, mingled with the Jews, formed the Samaritans. See, they're telling him, you're born of fornication. We know that Joseph is not your father, and more than likely Mary got with a Gentile, making you a half-breed, therefore you're a Samaritan. They're not done. They said, and by the way, you have a devil. You're demon-possessed. Did you read that? And has the devil. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Lift your hands and begin to ask God to talk to you, would you, today? Open up our understanding and give us strength. Speak clear words to us and let us understand. Help us to be doers of the word and not hearers only. Because you love us. For this we give you glory, we give you honor, we give you praise, and we say thank you. Thank you. Greet a few people around you, please. Please smile at somebody, tell somebody, I love you with the love of the Lord. Come on, smile at somebody right now. I want to speak to you on this subject on uh, this afternoon, the ultimate blow to the heart of God, subtopic, who's your daddy? <laughs> oh, touch your neighbor, say, you're going to get good right now, you're going to get good, you're going to get real good. <laughs> We understand the principle or, or the concept that God and Satan are enemies. Unfortunately, what we do not seem to understand is that Satan wants revenge against God. Uh, uh, Let's go to the book of Luke chapter 10 so you can see what I'm saying now. If someone beside you don't have a Bible,
please share your Bible. Amen. And you see someone struggling, trying to just find scriptures, help them. All right? Let's help each other. All right? Somebody, you didn't start off knowing the Bible either. Someone had to help you. We're in Luke chapter 10, and we're going to begin in verse 18. In fact, I'll actually begin in verse 17, Luke chapter 10, verse 17. I want you to understand that Satan wants revenge against God, and I want to show you why he wants revenge. Verse 17 of Luke chapter 10, and the 70 returned again with joy, saying, Lord, even the devils are subject to us in thy name or through thy name. Jesus responds, and you've got to hear this response in verse 18, and he said unto them, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. Now, now the relevance doesn't really, it, it is almost as if he heard them but didn't hear them. But in actuality, he heard them quite clearly and was trying to direct them to a truth of why they could do now what they were doing. What he was telling them was, I was there when Satan was kicked out. What he's really telling them is, I'm the one that kicked him out. And what he's really, really telling them is, because I kicked him out first, you have power to kick him out next. I beheld Satan as lightning. Now, why this terminology lightning? Well, because for lightning to happen, scientists tell us that cumulus clouds or thunderhead clouds must form. Clouds that become like castles in the sky and friction happens in the atmosphere. And with this friction, there comes a discharge of electricity. He uses this illustration to make known that Satan and he had a discharge in heaven and there came a discharge where God threw him out. He discharged him from the army of the Lord, but it was a dishonorable discharge. And so now, Satan wants revenge against God for kicking him out of heaven. Now, here's the problem. On a one-on-one -on -one confrontation, the devil has never been a match for God. He's an angel. I want to tell you again why I believe in one God. Because it does not take three gods to handle one devil. This is a fair fight. One God, one devil, whoop him every time. Satan is an angel, a fallen angel. He is not a god. He is not omnipresent. He has to have other fallen angels to do his bidding. And so Satan understanding that to really try to defy God directly really results in his bacon getting sizzled. So I want you to see what he does. Go to Zechariah chapter 2 with me now. Let's learn some things together and let's see what our enemy seeks to do. Zechariah chapter 2, and we're looking in verse 8. He knows, he's smart enough to understand that to try to confront God right on would result in him being hurt and hurt badly. Watch the confrontation. Jesus walks up to the man and the man has legions. Remember, because Jesus says, what is your name? The man says, we are legions for we are many. Now a legion was a Roman legion, which was anywhere from 3,000 to 6,000 soldiers. So this man had anywhere from 3,000 to 6,000 demons. That's why I, I don't care how depressed you are, your spirit's never too heavy that Jesus can't lift it.
Now you gotta watch the demons. They say to Jesus, have you come to torment us before our time? I'll get you, I'm giving you a chance to get to Zechariah 2 and 8, because I know some of you don't know where Zechariah is. I'm giving you a chance to find it. So he says, he says, and by the way, in the beginning of the Bible, there's an order of the books of the Bible, so we start looking. He says that I, I want you to recognize that I have authority. Of course, Jesus is, is here authority. But the demons look at Jesus and say to him, has thou come to torment us before our time? They understand that Jesus, you've got to catch this. The demons understand that God can torment them. See, some of you don't get this. You so think of Satan only doing the tormenting that you forget you can torment him. Let me tell you what torments the devil. It's when he bothers you and bothers you and bothers you and he's done everything he's able to do. He molested you, he lied on you, he did everything he could do to you and you can still lift your hands and say, I'm still here, I still have my joy, and I still have a praise, and I've got such a strong enough praise, I'll shake the corridors of hell with my praise. That torments the enemy because what do we do with you? stop this see when you're strong enough in God you can look at the devil and go you can't touch this <laughs> do your little dance <laughs> so, when you understand that God is with you then you know who can be against you say amen to that so Satan has learned that to try to really confront God in these manners in fact if you listen to the devil he actually says to God he asked God not to throw them out of the country. 6,000 demons are begging him not to throw them out of the country. They, 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 they weren't just afraid of being cast out of the man. They knew that he had authority to tell them to leave the country. I don't want to see your ugly face. Go. I don't care what you're dealing with. Jesus has the authority to take it off of you and make it go far away from you. Someone say, thank you, Jesus. Now, so this is what starts to happen. Look at Zechariah now, chapter two, verse eight. For thus saith the Lord of hosts, after the glory hath he sent me unto the nations which spoiled you, for he that touches you touches the apple of his eye. So what the devil has learned is the way to hurt God is to hurt you. Because you are the apple of God's eye. Parents, you understand that the best way to hurt you, hurt your child. Mm -hmm. And so he's learned that if I can hurt God's kids, I can poke God in the eye. Have you ever been poked in the eye? Yeah, I hurt. Now, did you see what he said? Did you see what he said? You're the apple of God's eye. It means, it means you're the pupil. You're the most sensitive part to God's body. If a microscopic piece of dust lands anywhere on your body, you really don't even know it's there. Let it land in your eye and your whole body stops. Because what God's trying to tell you is the smallest thing that bothers you has my attention. And if you would understand that, you would do what the, the hymn says, oh, what needless pains we bear, all because we do not carry everything to God in prayer. You would start bringing everything to God in prayer. You would not let the devil convince you that oh, God's up there playing with the cosmos and dealing with all kinds of things in the world. He ain't concerned about little bill this. Oh yes he is. God started trying to teach me that at a young age. I had a praying mother and I thank God for it. And I, I had some dogs that you know we used to play with and have and one of the dogs ran away and got loose and it upset me as a boy and I started crying. Mama took me and said, listen honey, God is concerned about your dog. Stop praying and ask God to send back your dog. I thought, you know, I love mama but I just thought she was having a bad day. Surely God was not concerned with some little bow wow. But I thought, what do I have to lose? So I knelt down in my area and I began to pray and ask God, told God how much the dog meant to me and would he send the dog back. And before I was done with the prayer, the dog was barking in the yard. Because what concerns you does concern God. 
Is not the way you feel about your children, parents. What concerns them concerns you. Why don't you lift your hands and thank him for that right now. Those of you that are feeling neglected, those of you that are feeling unloved, uh, you're the apple of his eye. You're the apple of his eye. You're the apple of his eye. So do you understand that by the devil hurting you, what he's trying to do, he's, he's trying, you see, this is a lot larger than you. You say, why was I molested? Why was I lied on? Why did things happen? This is a lot larger than you, friend. Why the devil seeks to hurt you is to make you self-centered so you make it all about you. Why the devil wants you to get hurt is so that you now receive the fear of being hurt. And so now all you know is yourself. I don't want to be embarrassed. I don't want to be hurt again. I can't take another blow like that again. All you know is you. It's the very opposite of worship. Worship is all about him. Hurt is all about you. And so that's why the devil seeks to hurt you, to make it all about you. Because he knows this would deliver the ultimate blow to the heart of God. This would make God cry. No devil ever made God cry. He simply say, hold your peace and get out. Hold your peace, very poetically put by the King James. Today's translation, shut up. You see, you don't get it. God doesn't want to talk to demons. That's why he looks at you and go, why do you want to? Some of you funny. You quote the devil all the time. I know, and some of you, some of you bless your little palpitating hearts. You come... I know it's the devil, but <laughs> rewind, be kind. You know it's the devil? Exactly. Why are you quoting him? Exactly. Why are you saying what he is saying? See, God is not interested in talking to demons. He just tells them to shut up. So that's why God don't want you listening to him. Hear the devil's talking in your head and tell you no, you're nothing. You're supposed to act like your true father. Shut up. Not, well, you have a point. <laughs> Anybody know who your daddy is? <laughs> Remember, whoever your daddy is, that's whose works you perform. Check your works. Check what you're doing. That tells you who your daddy is. Now come back to what Jesus said in St. John 8. So you can see this again in St. John 8 verse 44. See the words of Jesus again so that we can look a little bit deeper at this. So Satan wants to hurt you so that he can hurt God. I want you to say this to your neighbor. Say please do not allow Satan to use you as a pawn to hurt the heart of God. This is a lot larger than you, friend. A lot larger than you. St. John chapter 8 and in verse 44, listen to the words of Jesus again. He said, ye are of your father the devil, and the lust, which means the overwhelming desires of your father, you will do. He was a murderer from the beginning. He abode not in truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaks of the lie, he speaks of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. Now, if you will take that last thing that Jesus just gave you, Satan can turn into your greatest encourager. Everybody say he's the father of lies. So if the devil's coming to you telling you you're not going to make it, you say, thank you, now I know I'm going to make it. Because he just told you a lie, so you know the opposite. You know to believe the opposite. If he told you you're a failure, honey, you ought to start shouting. <laughs> Hallelujah. I, 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 just, I just hear God just a moment here. I wonder if there's somebody in here who the devil has told you that you're a failure, you're never going to make nothing, and right now you just want to rub it back in his face. You just, you just got to get up a moment. You just got to praise God. You just got to shout because I know you lied, and I know you, I'm here, and I'm in my right mind. And I still have my joy, and I still have my peace, and I still have my strength. I still have my praise. Somebody shout hallelujah in this house.
Give somebody a high five and tell them the devil is a liar. So the enemy can be your greatest encourager if you interpret him correctly. He tells you your boy is never going to be saved. You say thank you because now I know he's coming in. <laughs> All right, Jesus said he was a murderer. So now come to the book of 1 John so that you can see this. Jesus says that he's a murderer and he was a murderer from the, everyone say from the beginning. All right, 1 John chapter 3 and we'll begin at verse 12. 1 John chapter 3, verse 12. That's not St. John. St. John's in the beginning of the New Testament. 1 John's towards the end, towards Revelation. Revelation is the last book in the Bible. First John chapter 3, we're starting in verse 12. We just family, we just having fun together, that's all. All right, look what he said. Not as Cain, who was of that wicked one, and slew, everyone say he slew his brother. See, when you're of the wicked one, you'll slay your brother. You better check your works to find out who your daddy is. Uh-huh. He slew his brother, as wherefore he slew him, because his own works were evil and his own brothers were righteous. Mm hmm Now, marvel not, brethren, if the world hates you. Why should the world hate you? Because you don't have the same daddy. Same reason why Jesus told the Pharisees, you don't understand my speech, because we have different fathers. Now, listen to verse 14. We know. Everyone say, we know. We know that we have passed from death unto life because we love the brethren. He that loveth not his brother abideth in death. Whosoever hateth his brother is a murderer. And you know that no murderer has eternal life abiding in him. This theory of once saved, always saved, well, that just shot that. Don't love your brother, you don't have eternal life. You're going to make it sure and make sure you make it in. Huh? <laughs> Come on, look at somebody and tell them I love you with the love of the Lord. See, when you act like the wrong father, you will take on the works of that father and you will become a murderer like that father because you hate the brethren. That's why I look at people who want to come to church late and leave early. You don't ever want to talk to the brethren. You better check your daddy. Check your daddy. <laughs> mm -hmm. I look at folk that rather hang with folk in the world. See, the world's supposed to hate you. How come you're best friends of the world? You better check your daddy. Maybe because you're best friends because you got the same daddy. I'm just telling you what Jesus said now. Don't, don't go postal on the mailman and want to stamp me. Uh, listen to what he said here in Psalm 1, so you can hear this. Psalm 1, because this is the words of the Lord. Psalm 1, and, and we're looking at verse 1. Yes, I'm making you use your Bible. Amen. You can thank me later. Psalm 1 and uh, verse 1. Listen to what the psalmist said. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the... Why do you keep going to the ungodly to find out what to do with your life? Mm -hmm. You need to check your daddy. <laughs> uh, check your daddy, check your daddy. You better know who your daddy is. <laughs> Jesus said, now whoever your daddy is, that's whose works you will perform. In fact, Jesus went as far as to say, by their fruits you shall know them. That's Matthew chapter 7 and verse 21. Matthew chapter 7, verse 21. Jesus said, by their fruits you shall know them. What that means is by their actions you're going to know who they are. 
So now let me get right down to the heart of the matter. The heart of the matter is this, that the ultimate blow against the heart of God is when you switch fathers. He is the one that bore you. He is the one that you breathe his breath. He is the one that has provided everything for you. And now you'd rather take on a different father. Parents, could you imagine that if your child came to you after all the years that you took care of them and you invested in them and you helped them and you stood up late at night with them when they were sick and not feeling well and you prayed over them and you supplied finances for them and now when they get older, they look at you and declare, you're not my father, I'd rather go live with that child molester down the street. And you know what that child molester is going to do to them. That's what God deals with when he deals with his kids. Because many of you have actually taken on a different father. You say, how do I know I've got a different father? Check your works. <laughs> uh, because your father has a different kind of set of attitudes. It's found in Galatians chapter 5 and starting in verse 22. Galatians chapter 5 and in verse 22. Start looking, amen. In fact, you know what? We'll back up even a little bit more so that we can see it all. We'll back up in Galatians chapter 5 and we will begin, amen, looking at verse 19. Verse 19. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these, adultery. Fornication. Now, the Greek word here for fornication, so then if you, you know, study it, the Greek word for fornication, the Greek word is porne. We get our word pornography from this word. It refers to all sexual sins. And it refers to adultery. It refers, adultery means sex outside of marriage. It refers to fornication, which is sex between people who are not married. It re refers to homosexuality. It refers to bestiality. It refers to incest. He said, now those are the works of your flesh. He said, don't tell me you're doing those things and claiming God as your father. I didn't write it. I didn't write it. <laughs> Amen. You're homophobic. No, I'm not. I'm biblical. No, no, I'm not. Ain't my problem. I'm just telling you what the word says. Amen. Go study yourself. You'll find the same thing. Amen. If some of you actually, any, uh, you know, might have bought some Bible programs, you know, got some Bible stuff on your computer, maybe. No? Okay. Just was checking. Look what he said now. Verse, verse 19, now the works of the flesh are manifest with these adultery, fornication, uncleanliness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulation, wrath, strife, sedition, heresies, heresies is false doctrine, 21, envying, murders, drunkenness, revelings, which means partying all the time. Okay, I'm moving on. And such the like... This once saved, always saved doctrine is heresy. Listen to this. He's talking to the church of such the like of which I tell you before, as I've also told you in time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. It is not once saved, always saved. Because you can switch fathers in the middle of salvation. Hallelujah. 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 And this doctrine that Bishop Carlton Pearson is preaching about the doctrine of inclusion, that as long as you don't deny Jesus, you can be anything you want to be, you're saved. No, no, honey, the book don't agree with that one. That's heresy. Heresy means false doctrine. Listen now. Now notice the difference between your daddy, verse 22. But, see the contrast? The fruit, singular, not plural. These aren't separate and different fruits. This is one fruit with all these ingredients. Just like you would take flour and sugar and butter and, and eggs and make a cake. All of those ingredients make one cake. All of these ingredients make up the fruit. You need them all to be like your daddy.
The fruit of the Spirit is, not are, because it's plural, it's singular, is love, joy. Hold up, let me stop right there. Check your daddy. Because if you're looking in the mirror and you look like your bottom lip is playing handball with the curve, you need to check your daddy. You look like you've been baptized in vinegar, you need to check your daddy. Because the fruit of the Spirit is, someone shout, joy. You can't even smile in the house of God, in the presence of God, when in his presence is fullness of joy. You better check your daddy. Turn to your neighbor and smile. Come on, honey. Some of y'all ain't smiled all day. Bless your little hearts. Come on. Show them your teeth, baby. If you got dentures, whatever it is you got, just smile. Show them. If you're happy and you know it, notify your face. Tell somebody, I got one daddy. I will not deliver the ultimate blow to the heart of God and switch fathers. Listen to what he goes on to say. It's love, it's joy, it's peace, it's long suffering. Don't have enough of these folk. I'm gonna hurt somebody, I'm telling you right now. No, no, long. Here's the key. You don't know you have it until it's tried. See, some of you aren't getting it. Because God wants you to be like him, he allowed that person on your job to purposely come at you to test, to see if you have long suffering. I know you want off that job. I know you're tired of them now. I know you don't have enough. You say, I just had enough. Every day they're on my case. Every day they're trying to find something on me. Every day they're talking about me. Every day I don't have enough. I'm going to look for another job. And every time you look for one, God blocks it. And God sends you right back up in their face again. And you praying, Lord, deliver me. God said, no, I'm trying to develop you. Tell somebody, I have one father. I've got one father. And listen to what he goes on to say, verse 23. Meekness. Those of you who think meekness is weakness, you don't understand your father. Meekness is not weakness. Meekness is the ability to know who you are and don't have to act out of character in order to be heard. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Temperance. Temperance means balance, self-control. Against, he says, and goodness and faith. Listen to what he says. Meekness, temperance against such. There is no, everyone say, no law. There's nothing against it. Now, that's why God wants you to make a decision in this house today. I want to tell you why I refuse not to have joy. Because my daddy is one that has joy. My daddy deals with things all day long but still has joy. So I want to learn to be just like my daddy. Somebody pat yourself and say, I'm just like my daddy. You can crucify me, you can bury me, but don't you turn your back on me. Because I'm just like my daddy. I will rise again. Just when you think I'm down and out, honey, you better understand I didn't go any further than on my knees. And when I hit my knees to pray, I'm going to bounce back. Because I'm just like my daddy. Yes, I am. I've got one father. That's why, that's why. Well, look what he says in Ephesians chapter 4. And in verse 26. Ephesians chapter 4 and in verse 26. Hear the word of the Lord. He says, be ye 
angry, but sin not. You say, well, wait a minute, wait a minute. I thought I wasn't supposed to be angry. No, that's why you need to study. Uh, that's why a lot of you are having trouble right now because you're trying to suppress what God wants to use. Uh, it is not God that wants to take the anger away from you. Uh, it is God that wants to use the anger. Uh, he said, be ye angry, but sin not. Uh, verse 27 says, neither give place unto the devil. Uh, he said in verse 26, don't let the sun uh, go down on your path. Well, what he's trying to tell you is, I want you to be angry, but I want you angry at the devil. I don't want you to be angry against flesh and blood. I don't want you to wrestle against flesh and blood. If you wrestle against flesh and blood, you better check your daddy because the one that I serve, he fights against spiritual forces. So he said, if you're going to be like me, uh, you're going to have to fight against spiritual forces uh, and not against flesh and blood. Uh, so God wants you to understand, I want you angry. Uh, I want you to get angry at that spirit of perversion uh, that was responsible for molesting you. Uh, I want you to get angry uh, at the spirit of confusion uh, that's trying to affect you. Uh, I want you angry uh, at the spirit of suicide uh, that's trying to get all in your house. Uh, I want you angry at the spirit of depression that's trying to tell you you can't make it. I want you to act just like your daddy and lift your hands and open your mouth and declare to that spirit, I shall stand, I shall not die, but I shall live and declare the works of the Lord. Give somebody a high five and tell them I'm just like my daddy. Oh, Jesus. Just like my daddy. Yes, I am. Just like my daddy. Yes, I am. Oh, 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 oh. Uh, woo, I feel a praise up in this house. I feel a praise up in here. Ah, glory, cause I got a praise. I got a praise. And I got to let it out. Just like my daddy. Talk like my daddy. Think like my daddy. Act like my daddy. That's why you can hurt me. And I won't turn around and just take your head off. But I will take the spirit's head off. That's influencing you against me. Because I'm just like. Some of you, some of you, bless your heart, honey. You're stingy. You don't want to give to nobody. You better check your daddy. Some of you, honey, will spend more at McDonald's. You will spend more on a happy meal than you will in the offering. You better check your daddy. You'll give more to a clown than you'll give to the church. You better check your daddy. Hallelujah. 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 Somebody shout, I know who my daddy is. Woo! I know who my daddy is. Yes, I do. I will not switch fathers. There are things I will not do, not simply because they're laws of the church. I won't do them because I don't want to hurt my daddy. I know who I am to him, and I don't want to break his heart. I know he only put those things in place for me so that I wouldn't get hurt by them. When a parent tells you, don't touch that stove, it's not because they're trying to be mean. It's not because they want to hurt you. It's because they're trying to keep you safe. And when God tells you no fornication, when God tells you no adultery, when God tells you no homosexuality, he's trying to keep you safe. He's trying to keep AIDS from you. He's trying to keep sexual diseases from you. He's trying to keep you safe. He's not trying to hurt you. He's not trying to take your fun away. One father, one father, one father. 
Come on, musicians. Come on, singers. Is anybody sold out? Sold out to one father. Sold out to one father. Sold out to one daddy. Stop switching fathers. Listen while they're getting this together here. I want you to understand something. The reason why some of you are struggling is because you keep switching fathers. One moment you're on the Lord's side, the next moment you're on the devil's side. One moment you're praising God, the next moment you're swearing. One moment you're opening up your mouth, loving God, the next moment you're turning, telling dirty jokes. One moment you're loving God and saying praise the Lord to the brethren, the next moment you're talking behind somebody's back. You gotta switch with one, you gotta stay with one father. Somebody shout one father. I'm not gonna leave my father. Say yes! Say yes! Come on, let's do that sold out. We gotta be sold out to one father. You might as well come on and put your hands together right now. You're gonna have to move. Come on, come on, come on. Act like your daddy in this house. Somebody act like your daddy. Sold out. No room, no vacancy. I'm on field up. 
too far to turn around.
Listen carefully. <clears throat> Listen carefully. You just witnessed two baptisms. Somebody say amen. Now, Jesus said, you must be born again of water and spirit. Born again. Who needs to be born again? The ones that have the wrong father. If you have the wrong father, you must be born again. And there's only two forces in this world. Either one father has you or the other father has you. If you have not been born again of water and spirit into God, that means that the devil has you. That's what we heard. You are, you are of your father, the devil. Five minutes ago, these two boys belonged to the devil. That was their father. But when they came up out of the waters, forgiveness of sins, they were born again, now with the real father. They left the bad father and they got a hold of the good father. Five minutes ago, they belonged to a different family. Now they belong to the family of God. How many of you belong to the family of God? How many of you have been born again? Now when we say baptism, we're not referring to Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. There's no authority in titles. Everything you do, do it in the name of Jesus. The authorities in the name. Somebody said the authorities in the name. That's the Father's name. How many of you belong to Jesus? I hear so many people say, well, I've already been baptized. No, you've been immersed, you got wet. But biblically speaking, it's got to be in the name. Somebody say amen. <clears throat> They're going to sing one more time. You know who your father is this morning. You know if it's the wrong one or the right one. If you've understood the message, we're going to sing one more time. Would you please come? Let us know that you want the real father. You want to be born again. Somebody say amen. So you, you need to leave this building with God, your father. Don't leave going back to the same family. Join the family of God. <clears throat> All of you that understood the message and you want a new father, you want the right father. When they sing and you've got to courageous, you've got a backbone and you're tough and you know what you want God and you're not ashamed to accept God, I want you to come and stand next, I want you to come and sta stand next to me as they sing you need to be born again, we don't want to leave this church without praying for you, you need to be born again, somebody say amen somebody say amen that's why God brought you here that's why you needed to hear this message tell you something not very not very many preachers have the backbone to preach this message most preachers are going to want to tickle your innards they're like seven up tickle your innards the word of god is not to tickle us the word of god is there to save us you should know the truth and the truth is what sets you free not a bunch of lies the truth shall set you free and you've heard the truth today, and it'll set you free if you accept it. Somebody say amen. As they sing, you got the courage, come and stand next to me. Sing.
You need to be born again. All of you that want to be born again into the kingdom, please come. We don't do it today, but we'll get you ready for next Sunday. We'll get you ready for next Sunday.